Okay, so I need to make a thumbnail. <laughs> already, already, already. Awkward silence. Hey guys, it's your girl Finable Curls. If you're new, welcome, and if you're not, welcome back to my channel. So today is about high school and getting prepared for college, all that good stuff. This is mainly for juniors and seniors, but I also have some tips in there for freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors. It applies to everybody in high school. So I need everybody in high school to be watching this video, to be paying attention, to be taking notes, all that good stuff. And I'm going to just hurry up and jump right into it because I got a lot to say. I got 15 tips, you feel me? So I need to chill out. Before I get started, I'm just going to sit back and let you do what you need to do. You know, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. I'll wait. I got some good tips in store for y'all, just, just wait. Let's get into it. Let me just give y'all a little rundown of my high school career. Um, I got a, well, I finished with a 4.0 GPA. I am the team captain of the track team. I have a leadership in the arts for orchestra. I'm in the Trium Honor Society Poetry Club. Real Kappa Honor Society, which is Social Studies, Foreign Language Honor Society, for Latin, Latin Honor Society, Latin Club. Uh, I got eight chords, I think, and then four medals, I think, yeah. I got the Fine Arts Seal. I got Honor Grad Seal on my diploma, because I'm an undergraduate. I got Honor Roll for sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, not freshman year. I kind of screwed up my freshman year in one class, so I didn't get it that year. But yeah, I got all year on a roll for the rest of my three years of high school. I took AP classes, I didn't take dual enrollment. But yeah, I think that's all I got. And I will be going to Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge in like a few days. <laughs> and I'll be majoring in psychology and I hope to become a neuropsychologist in the future like going to grad school so yeah into the tips tip number one is kind of a general tip you can apply this to life to be honest but in terms of high school you want to work hard your freshman year through your junior year so you can slack off a little bit senior year now this doesn't mean work hard all three years and then slack off completely senior year no you should try your best in senior year work your hardest senior year but when you work your hardest freshman through junior year and you slip up in senior year that's okay because colleges don't really look at your senior year that much they look at freshman sophomore junior year and maybe senior year but not really so when you work hard freshman through junior year and let's say you fail a couple english tests in senior year it's fine because you worked hard your first three years, it's okay if you mess up a little bit your senior year. They're not gonna like, be like, oh my gosh, she failed an English test for once in senior year. We're not gonna accept her. Like, no. If you mess up senior year, they're more lenient on that than if you mess up all first three years of high school, freshman year, all that. That's when they're like, I don't know about this person when you're slacking off freshman through junior year and then you decide to pick it up like end of junior year whole senior year that doesn't look good to colleges and in general so you want to work hard for the most part your first three years of high school and you should still work hard your senior year but if you're tired if it's just not working out it's okay so tip number one work hard, work your best, try your hardest, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Cool, cool. Tip number two, be good to your teachers. Establish a relationship with your teachers and your counselor. And this is because, well, first off, when you have a good relationship with your teachers, you can just kind of go up and talk to them about anything because for the most part, my teachers at least, they were 
really good especially the ones that i established a relationship with and it wasn't even like for the sole purpose of recommendations it was just because i was drawn to them and i just thought they were really cool so i talked to them more and more and it was mainly the teachers that i had for multiple years that i have a bond with now and those were the people who did recommendations for me for college now my counselor on the other hand she a little cuckoo but she ended up doing this thing where we had to fill out a little information thing about ourselves and then we had to set up a conference with her and just talk with her so that she could write a recommendation for us because colleges require a recommendation from your counselor and from teachers or anybody else whatever but the primary one is your counselor so it is your job to establish a relationship with your teachers not all of them you don't have to do it with all of them because i know there's people out there especially me where i'm just not much of a social person i'm pretty much an introvert i am an introvert what am i talking about and reaching out to talk to teachers i'm just like eh. but i do have teachers where like, I actually enjoy their presence. I enjoy talking to them when we're not doing anything in class and just stuff like that. So talk to your teachers so that when it's time to ask for recommendations for college, for scholarships, for jobs maybe, they'll be there to do it for you. Tip number three, get involved not only in school, but also outside of school. Not only is this gonna build your repertoire, your repertoire, but it will also help you out with scholarships because a lot of scholarships ask for community service. And I personally think it's better to have community service in school and outside of school because it makes you look like you have a broader range of helping out people and you're not just doing stuff within your school because you have to, you know? A lot of scholarships and colleges ask for like, what community service have you done outside of school? Like they, they'll ask two separate questions, like what community service or things have you done in school? And then they'll ask another question, what have you done outside of school? And not gonna lie, for the out of school section, I ain't have that much because all of my community service was mainly in school and I mean, I still turned out fine, but I'm trying to help you guys out and it's probably best if you get in school service and out of school service. So branch out, branch out. That's that's the key thing in this tip, branch out. Do everything. Don't overwhelm yourself though. Tip number four, you're never too young to apply for scholarships. And what was I about to say? <laughs> What I use to apply for scholarships and still use is FastWeb and Scholars App. I'll probably link it in the description box below. I will. Those websites, there's like way more. They're like basically all connected, but those websites have millions of scholarships, probably billions of scholarships on them. And there's a lot of age requirements and it's not just a junior and senior thing you can start applying for scholarships in middle school you're not gonna find that many but they're out there so you're never too young to apply with that being said you don't have to wait till your junior and senior year to start applying for scholarships just if you want to go ahead and start now while you're like a freshman or whatever and it'll do nothing but help you because Let's say even though you don't win any scholarships, at least you get the essay practice. At least you know how the process works, how you need to apply for this stuff, how to proofread your essays, and you just end up getting better because you're having to write these essays over and over again. And also, the more scholarships you apply for with essays, save your essays so that way because a lot of these scholarships ask like the same questions basically. So when you save your scholarships in your computer or whatever, you'll have that for the next time you have a scholarships to apply for and it's asking the same question all you got to do is copy and paste copy and paste and let's say the prompt isn't necessarily the exact same as the essay you already have all you got to do is copy and paste whatever fits and then type the rest that's it the more scholarship essays you write the more you have in the vault to pull out whenever you're applying for more scholarships and you need you know, you know, you know. 
I kind of forgot what I was saying. <laughs> but I think y'all get the gist of like what I was saying. Tip number five. This is for my juniors. Nope, 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 not my juniors. This is for my seniors, mainly. Your college, your college, so sorry. Your college applications are deeper than you think. And what I mean by that is you do not need to be relying on just your SAT and your ACT scores. Cause I promise you, if you don't have no community service, a good scholarship essay, they're gonna turn you down because they're, how do I put this? They want well-rounded people. Like, if you're just an academic scholar and nothing else, they're probably not going to accept you. Which, I don't know, I'm not a college admissions person, but that's, I think that's mainly how it goes. You want to just play your strengths, basically. So, just because you get a high standardized test score does not mean you don't need to do community service, and it does not mean that your essay doesn't have to be top-notch. Like, you still need to put your all into that essay. You still need to go out and do community service. And really, your SAT and your ACT, as the years go by, they're just becoming more and more irrelevant. So do not put your all into that SAT or that ACT score, girl, because it's really not gonna matter in a couple years. I personally say put your all into your essay because that tells the admissions person, whoever is reading your application, more about you than anything else in that application your sat or your act score does not tell about your personality and that's what they're looking for personality how well-rounded you are as a whole it's not just academics so you want to put your all into that essay really and you want to put your all into the service you're doing but basically what i'm saying is don't put your all into the SAT or the ACT or whatever because that does not tell them about you. The essay, the service, all that stuff tells about you, your personal life, stuff like that. They want to get down to the nitty gritty, which is you. Oh, this brings me to tip number six. The SAT slash ACT isn't about how smart you are. It's about how well you can take the test. And because of this reason, now you can understand why I just said, as the years go on, the SAT and the ACT are becoming more and more irrelevant because it's not actually testing how smart you are or anything like that. It's just a matter of practicing enough so that you understand the lingo of the questions because let's be honest here, the SAT and the ACT appeal to a specific group of people who actually understand that language. I'm not gonna get into it, but if you know, you know. So it's not a matter of how smart you are. It's a matter of how well you understand how the questions are worded and what their version of the best answer is. Because it is already known that all the answers are correct in a way, in a way. But the actual correct answer is based on what the people who make the test are think they think is right like the most right the most right out of all the other choices which to me i think it's bs but it doesn't matter what i think because i still had to take the test still had to study for it so just keep that in mind when you're studying it and getting your scores back let's say you don't have a high score it's not because you're not a smart girl it's because you don't understand like well enough the way the questions are worded what the people who created the test think is the best right answer out of the choices so what you need to do is practice sat prep act prep so you can understand how the questions are going to be worded and what they think will be the best right answer it's studying the actual format of the test I hope that makes sense. Tip number seven, have someone else proofread your college essays. If my mom and her coworker had not read my essay, it would be subpar, basically. <laughs> like, let me explain. My mom, she went to college, she's currently in college, and her coworker is like also like in the whole college thing. So when they proofread my essays, they're gonna have more expertise as to how word how to like word stuff better basically 
as opposed to me, a high school senior, basically. You want to get somebody with more expertise to proofread your essays. Like, I know my AP Lang teacher was proofreading essays and stuff like that. And I'm sure there are, like, many other people who will do that for you. You just have to ask. And don't be afraid to ask your friends, like, what to write. Because I was giving my friends tips about, like, how to expand their essays and make it longer. Because your essays basically got to be fluff. If you're one of those people who struggles with writing essays that need to be 500 words, 1,000 words, whatever, ask somebody what else they should put so you can add more fluff to the essay. Because I guarantee you that's what a lot of teachers are going to tell you. You need more fluff. Tip number eight, also related to essays. What was I about to say? Goodness gracious. <laughs> be honest in your essays, AKA don't be a suck up. Because listen, the essay is how these college admissions people are going to get to know you without doing an interview. So when you're being a suck up in your essay or you're just trying to, I don't know, get by, there, it's just not gonna work. And it just really depends on who reads your essay. But I guarantee you, if you're not trying to express yourself through your essay, it doesn't matter who's gonna read it because they're just gonna, bye, not accepted. You need to put your personality, your heart, your soul into that essay. And just don't be, don't be fake, be you, be you. Number nine for my seniors, apply either early action or early decision. Early action is basically non-binding, which means that you can apply for other colleges but you'll just be applying early for this one or whatever one you decide to apply early action for early decision is binding which means that if you get accepted into that college that means you're just going there which means that most like nine times out of ten you can't apply to other colleges early decision but you can apply early action so i would recommend apply early action unless you have that number one college that you really want to go to then i'd say go ahead and apply your decision if that's what you want to do if you're 100 percent sure that if you get accepted you are definitely going to that college the earlier you apply the faster you get the decision on whether you got accepted or not and then the faster you can accept your um what's it called accept your invitation to go to college whatever and the earlier you can get into housing the earlier you can get scholarships all that you want to do all that early get it out of the way because number one senior year like third quarter on or second semester i mean however you want to say it that's when it gets hectic i mean at least for me second semester of senior year is like a whole hurricane but you want to do early action, early decision, so you can get all that college stuff out of the way and then worry about senior year, second semester. For me, like in the fall, senior year was like really chill, laid back because they knew that we need to be applying for college and dealing with FAFSA, college stuff, all of that. So you wanna take advantage of that. So just go ahead and apply for college in the fall. Tip number 10. Hurry up and submit your FAFSA. Because listen, the longer you take to submit it, the more money, the potential money you're losing. If you take too long to submit that FAFSA, if you don't submit that FAFSA until December, January, whatever, you're probably not gonna get any money off of you. Okay, let me be honest here. FAFSA is kinda, mm -hmm, but you still need to do it because that's what schools use most of the time if they don't use FAFSA they use the little college board CF CP whatever it's called it's something else but most colleges dang near all use FAFSA hurry up and fill it out as possible so you can have potentially more scholarship money loans if you're into that offered to you tip number 11 don't take too long to make a decision on what college you're going to I made this mistake because it took forever for the colleges that I got accepted into to like send me my financial aid package, like my estimated financial aid package. And I was waiting on that because finances 
like the cost and everything was a major aspect in my decision for what college I was going to go to. And one college, like one of my top colleges was taking forever to send like an estimation of what my financial aid package was going to be. And so when I made the decision to go to LSU, it was kind of late because it was like either early May or late May or something like that. And they were already getting started with housing. And then spin orientation, which is where they make my schedule. And it's like, they make your schedule in the spring and advise whatever. If COVID was not happening and spin orientation was in person, I would have missed it because I had not made my decision until May and the orientation was in spring. So I would have had to do regular orientation instead of like the orientation that was made for people who were offered scholarships. I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of that opportunity. So you want to make your decision earlier than I did because <laughs> I made mine in May and that was late. You want to do it at least in like March, April. I think number 12, hear me out, hear me out. Both AP and dual enrollment are beneficial. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I see a lot of arguments going on like, oh, I should have did dual enrollment instead of AP. AP was such a waste of time. No, it's not, it's not. I did, I took only AP classes. I didn't do dual enrollment. I didn't have a specific reason why I didn't. It, I just didn't get around to doing dual enrollment. And AP classes still help me. It's just that dual enrollment is probably like a faster way to get credits or whatever. Because dual enrollment is literally you taking college classes at a college. And all you got to do is pass the class and then you get the credit. Whereas AP, you take the class and then you have to take an exam and get three a three to a five on an exam for it to count as a college credit otherwise you kind of just sit that class for no reason so i see where people are coming from but it's beneficial for ap if you're doing ap it's still beneficial when you score high enough on the exam so if you do well enough both are beneficial granted when in some cases dual enrollment credits don't transfer over some colleges are still like well, that class doesn't meet up to our standards or it's too basic, whatever. Not in that wording, but <laughs> y'all know what I mean. It's like just the course that they have at their college is probably a little more advanced than the course that you took. So they're going to make you take that course that they have, even though it seems like you already took that. But the case is every college is different. Some colleges have the same course but a different like variety that they offer within the course if that makes sense ap and dual enrollment it, they both have their pros and cons basically is what i'm trying to say but my opinion both are beneficial as long as you do well and as long as you keep track of what scores and like what scores will they let your credits transfer over and is this um is this class good enough for whatever college i will go to number 13 for all my high school students be a leader being a leader is just a benefit on its own because it just makes you look good in every way possible i don't really have much to say on this like strive to be a leader in whatever organizations you join in whatever clubs you join student government it makes you look good and it's also a workload. You get to learn a lot when you gain a leadership position. I was track team captain and that adds to my repertoire. If you're offered a leadership position or if you want to apply, do it. it in the end, it's nothing but beneficial. I mean, granted, when you're a leader, you gotta sometimes, not even sometimes, all the time, there's always something to deal with, people to deal with, just stuff but in the end it's beneficial to you and that's all that matters number 14 for my seniors for my juniors for my sophomores for my freshmen for my middle schoolers 
it's okay if you don't know what you want to major in yet. It's okay if you don't know what career you want to have yet. Because, listen, I've been in some Zoom calls because COVID, where they're like, at square one, like, if you don't know what you're going to major in, you can visit this office, you can email this person, take this quiz, and it's just a bunch of resources to, like, get your mind flowing on what you want to do, what your personality is best suited for. Like, it's okay if you don't have a decision in your head on what you want to major in or what your career is, whatever, because they got you. A lot of people come into college not knowing what they're going to major in. And it's okay because your first two years of college are preliminary courses. You got to take English, you got to take math, social studies, and something else, science. Unless you like test out of it or get already have credits for it from dual enrollment or AP. So if you don't have a major in mind yet, it's fine because you still have to take preliminary courses for like at least your first year or your first semester, whatever. So you have time. Number 15, make the most out of your senior year. Coming from a senior who got half of their senior year taken away because of COVID-19, I'm satisfied even though like most of the senior events got canceled because they're in the second half or the second semester of the year. I'm still satisfied because in the first half of senior year, I was actually having a lot of fun. And I still got a lot of memories out of just the first semester of senior year. So, man, you do not want to be loaded with a bunch of work your senior year. You just want to have fun at that point. So, just make the most out of your senior year. I mean, work hard, but don't try to overload yourself with stuff to do. I mean, unless you want to, I mean, unless you don't have no friends or anything, but that's none of my business. It's none of my business, but yeah, have fun your senior year. Make the most out of it because college probably ain't going to be easy. I mean, I don't know yet, but college is probably a big step up and just a major adjustment to make. So you want to make the most out of your last year of knowing what to do. Um, knowing who to go to, having your friends with you to see every day, make the most out of it and save the moment. Yeah. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful, especially coming from somebody who literally just graduated. If you like this video, I'm not going to tell you to subscribe or anything like that because for one, I just did this video because I felt like the information is very helpful and needed for a lot of people. So you don't have to like, you don't have to comment, you don't have to subscribe, none of that. But you know the protocol? I don't need to say it because you just already know. I know you've been watching YouTube videos before this. So you already know what all of them say at the end of this, at the end of their videos. Um, if you want to, go ahead. If you don't want to, it's none of my business. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!